you're kind of quiet. All right, who drove here? Sweet, that's awesome. Um, who drove longer than an hour? Oh, sweet. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to scream. Um, if you drove farther than an hour, I want you at the top of your voice to thank your drivers. So in the count of three, I want you to say, drivers, you rock! All right, one, two, three. Give them a hand clap, if you will. You rock because you put up with boogers, farts, wedgies, you know what I'm saying, snot everywhere. Thank you, drivers of America. <laughs> I got another opportunity for you to scream. Yes! <laughs> if you remember the color of the vehicle you drove down in, scream! Sweet, sweet. You're pretty smart. You're pretty smart. You remember the, the color. All right, here we're going to get a little bit more tricky. If you know the make and model of the vehicle you took down, please scream. Oh, it's, it's, it's left. Okay, 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 okay. All right, here we go. Here, harder one. If you know for sure that the brake pads were checked out before you pulled off, scream. All right, here's, here's one more. Here's one more. Here's one more. One more. If you know absolutely sure that you were able to look at to see if there was enough steering fluid, scream. Somebody look at the person next to you and say, you're not telling the truth. Listen, listen, listen. The reality is, is that I started up here saying like, yo, if you know about the car and you got in the car and you drove, you should know the make, you should know the color. You maybe kind of sort of know the make and model. Um, you probably wouldn't know whether or not there's steering fluid inside the vehicle unless you went and you checked it out. Especially if you're a passenger, you're not expected to know what's in the steering fluid canal. The reality is, is that you got in the car, you drove here, you came screaming and, and making all kinds of noises and all those kinds of things, and coming down here not knowing whether or not the brake pads were good, not knowing whether or not there was steering fluid in. So at some point, you extended trust to the driver. Let's give the drivers of America a hand clap. I, I have a task tonight to talk about trust. I want to pray because I'm going to dive into this theme, and this is very serious to me, and you, you'll kind of understand that in a minute, but it's very serious to me, this idea of trusting, because the, the reality is that we all trust in something, and uh, today I'm going to challenge all of us in this room to consider trusting in the God of the universe, so I ask you to join me in prayer, and then we'll dive right in. Daddy, we just thank you so much for being good. Even when we were trash. You decided to love us anyway. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to trust in you. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you're my strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I got one scripture and maybe another one that I might have you chew on here today. Pretty familiar. It's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. And I just want you to listen to this one. You probably can recite it. But it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. I don't care if you've been in church 377 years of your life. I, 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 really, I don't care if you're the pastor's child. This particular scripture, if you ever get lost anywhere, this particular scripture is foundation. It's the foundation of who we are as Christians. This right here is, is to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, trust in the Lord, lean not to your own understanding, is the very foundation of what we believe in who we are. To trust means to have total confidence in, to be secure, to be bold, to be totally confident in, confident in and to be secure and to be bold, to, 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 to absolutely know, to, to have no shadow of doubt, to know for sure. When I was a kid, we had this hill. I grew up in the inner city of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Michigan in the building. And uh, we, we used to do this thing, it's like this hill called Francis Hill, where you, it goes like this, and it, and it goes like this, and it goes all the way down. And uh, I used to get on my bike. And uh, I was a kid, and I used to jump on the bike, and we used to just coast down there. We used to race, you know, saying we racing, and my head's going back like this, snot going everywhere, tears, everything. I'm looking like this, looking real ugly, going down the thing and, and doing that, and, and going down there. And then my first couple times, I was going really good, you know. And then, and then, and then, as I got a little bit more more settled, I started to to, to ride down it, and then I would take my hands off. You know the famous term, riding no hands. Who, who knows about no hands? Oh yeah, you know, you do like that and, 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 I, and I lift my hands off really quick. And then before you know it, going down the hill, I'm coasting. I'm like lifting my hands like, oh, this is sweet. And I'm riding, my hands are up and doing that. And here's the master, here's the master skill set is that eventually you rise up and you lean against the handlebars and you look like this. Who knows what I'm talking about? You know, you look like this, and then you raise your hands up, and it's like you got your own theme music. Ooh, you know, and, and it gets really beautiful, and it starts to do that. People, that is the perfect picture of what it means to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. To totally, to move from here, to move to, to, ooh, You sound wonderful, not. <laughs> yes. To trust in God is to totally rely on Him. You may go to youth group, you may be involved with church every single day, you, you, you may have maybe able to quote a hundred different scriptures, you, you, you may even cry and snot at this conference, but the reality, the sad reality is that many of us in this building will leave out of here and never truly, truly, truly submit and truly trust in the Lord with our whole hearts. We can attend church service after church service, do one mission trip after the next mission trip, but never really trust in the Lord. Never really let go of the handlebars and allow him to lead our paths. I said it's a lame lifestyle. And God has so much more for all of us. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. When you look at the word all in any different language, the word all means all. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. That means even in the parts of our life, and I'm about to enter into some very touchy spaces, but even in the parts of our life that we like to tuck away and we say, I don't want to trust in God in this area because quite frankly, I've been hurt in this area and I'm not trusting him in this. Maybe I'm not going to trust in the Lord in the area of, 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 of trusting people and allowing people into my heart because there was a divorce that happened in my household and it ripped me to stress. I don't trust a single human being, a man that ever walked by because my father walked away from me. My innocence was taken from me. I was molested. So therefore, I don't even trust adults. 
I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not trusting the Lord in that area. I can't trust people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and then lean not to your own understanding. If all of our ways mean all of our ways and and everything that we do, well, then what happens to this idea that we've allowed to to come and say, well, man, does that mean that we're doing works? Because, you know, I I, I don't want to to have to yield everything. And it it doesn't mean I'm because I'm working towards serving the Lord and because I'm looking toward, I'm working towards uh, serving the God of the universe. Is that like works? Absolutely not, because there is something in the scripture that outlines and say, well, wait a minute, there is something that God is expecting from every Every human being and every single person that sits here today, and I believe it is for us to totally submit to him and yield to him and trust in all that he has for us. Not hiding stuff behind our backs. There's a scripture in 1 John chapter 2. It says, whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. Whoever does not do what the Lord says and that he's commanded is a liar. He, he's a liar and, and, and God is requiring us to do some things. And I believe one of the main things that he's requiring of us is for us to totally trust in him, to totally lean on him and let go of the handlebars and allow him to direct our paths. In all areas, oh. you know, in all areas, you, you know, you, you say that you love God with your lips, but yet you still have a mouth of destruction. You're lying, you're, 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 you're cursing, you're, you're doing, you still have a, I, I, I love the Lord with my lips, but yet I still have a, a mouth of destruction. You know, worshiping God with, with our hands, coming here and, and looking righteous and, and looking and, and doing all of this, but then still sexing with our bodies. I'm not giving that to you because I enjoy that. This one is going, my heart breaks for the kids in other countries. And I, I, just, I just weep every time I see them. But when people that look different from you, act different from you, different from you, and from a different perspective from, than you, then what do we do? Not all of my heart. <laughs> I'm not going to trust the Lord with all of my heart and my whole existence. I want to keep this piece of me. and You can't have it. I'm not going to completely yield to you because I want to keep my stuff. And the scripture still says, whoever says, I know him. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. There's three phases. It's holding on to the handlebars, holding on to the other pieces that we don't want to let go, then we kind of sort of have a little bit of trust and a little bit of faith, and we do this kind of thing like, whoo, that's sweet. And then there's just this fully extending and say, I'm going to totally trust in God and allow him to move in my life, and he can do whatever he wants to do because I am going to choose to trust in him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. This idea of leaning not to our own understanding starts with denying self. To deny myself, my agenda, my purpose, choice will be done, has to be decreased so that God's power, his rule can be increased in my life so then we can, he can, we can start to, to, to love him back and we can start to totally trust in him and then we might see transformation happen in our lives.
are we willing to let go the handlebars and go no hands? What if God wants to, to allow his will to run? What if his will is not a safe journey? I got this thing where I call it knee pad Christians, you know? You ever see those kids that ride up the street and they got like 900 different knee pads on? You know, they ride and they can barely ride their bikes because it's knee pads on the toes, on the pinky, the ears. I mean, they're doing all this thing and they're riding up the street and then the mother is looking out the blinds and watching the, the, the boy ride up the street and the father's running next to him. Well, he's 17 years old. Why in the world does he have on knee pads anyway? To me, this is what Christianity looks like. And I gotta be honest with you, it's quite, it's, most of it is adults' fault. You see, the older and older we get, the more safe we become. The older and older we get, the more chances we wanna take. So what we end up doing is that we end up investing it back into youth. And, and, and what happens is, is that now the parents are scared and the youth are scared. And then nobody's living a life of excitement to say, maybe God wants me to rip some of these pads off and maybe he wants me to stand and then just feel the wind and feel the snot just rip, dripping all over the place. Maybe he wants that for me. Maybe, maybe he desires for me to totally depend on him, take away all of the other stuff and be left with him and him alone. Maybe he doesn't want me to depend on my looks anymore. Maybe he does not want me to depend on my intellect anymore. Maybe he does not want me to depend on my stature, my family stature anymore. Maybe he wants me to totally rely on him and him alone, and that's it. Let go. to lean not in our own understanding is critical because there are some things that seem right in our mind, but they surely lead us to destruction. My own agenda will absolutely lead me to a, a, to a brick wall every single time. Holding on to the handlebars, though it seems safe, though it seems as if this is the way to go, though it seems like, yeah, this person was mean to me, so I'm going to hold a grudge and be angry with them. Though that seems good, but I'm telling you that every single time a small seed is planted and then eventually it grows and, and, and the sin grows and it gives birth to death every single time. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. You'll get this in two seconds, but this whole submitting to God, there was a period of my life where I couldn't even get on my knees and pray to God because I was so cocky, I was so prideful. I, I couldn't like, how you want me to kneel down to, to, so this language of submit to him, and he will make your path straight. To submit means to accept or yield to another person. To submit to God, this is pretty sweet, to submit to God is to deny your own agenda and trust in the process. You know, you, you're riding down there with no hands, you're doing that. That may be a pebble that may, you may roll over and it may cause you to flip over. You, you, you may fall down and scrape your knee, but the reality is, is that are we willing to lay down my own agenda and then trust in the complete process even if I fall down? Even if it hurts a little bit, are we willing to trust? Even when that person crossed you, that, you know, the girl that said this and said that about you, even, are you willing to say, man, I'm willing to get hurt again? Oh, that, that's like, that sucks. I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm just an honest person, and I, I'll, I'll be real honest with you. I, I, I didn't want to let go of stuff. I didn't want to trust 
trust in God, and that means I have to trust him in all these areas of my life. Um, I would rather let vengeance be choice. Let me have my will. Let me do what I want to do. And, and, and let, me, let me be the winner. You're not getting this. Um, I was molested at nine years old. You see, uh, my dad threw me up in the air, walked away, and left me there to, to struggle. And, and to, to, to hopefully, I've, I met him uh, maybe eight times now in my whole life. I'm 40 years old. And, and, and three of those have been in the last two years, you know? Um, and I became this very violent individual. I knew of God. I, I, had a, I had a form of godliness. I knew who he was, but I didn't totally submit to him, nor did I, I trust in the process. So what it ended up having me to do is that one, I, I wish that the person, I looked for the person who molested me and I wanted to kill him. I allowed to fester. I allowed to grow inside of me, and, and it got me to a place where I got so angry. I got to a place where I, I wanted every bully to pay. I, I picked out every single bully and wanted to fight them. It started to fester. I did not trust in the Lord in this whole, in this area, and I knew better. I wanted my way. My agenda was more important. I wanted to be that guy. I wanted everybody to know that Troy was, was on top of his game. I wanted my will to be done. There's a key word that's continually to be used. It's I, I, my, my. It's about me and Troy's kingdom and what I wanted to get done. But the reality is that God wants to move me out of the center and place him in the center of it so that I can truly be a committed follower of Christ. And that takes trust. It takes total surrender. And because I did not move out of the way, because I wanted my own way, I ended up getting caught in a drug sting operation, two, three of my brothers being shot, I ended up being homeless, living in the back of a U-Haul truck because I had to hold on to the wheel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I make this right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this thing. I refuse to trust them. I refuse to trust in the God of the universe. I refuse to say, Lord, I want, I'm going to allow you to enter into the space. Despite popular opinion, to trust in the Lord is our choice. It's a choice that we have to make. It's a cognitive decision. It's something that we think about. We have to choose to do it. Just like we trust the driver, we have the ability to totally trust God, to, to just walk in his presence, to totally submit to him and say, Lord, I want to let you have your way with me. I'm going to let you do what you want to do in my life. I'm going to let go of the handlebars and let you take over. There's this, um, I'm not sure if it's true, but I think the message is the same. This is idea that uh, guys that go out to catch monkeys, I've never went monkey catching before, so I'm not sure I've been able to, to confirm this. But they said when they would go out to the jungle to catch the monkeys, uh, they would place something sweet down into like a jar type of trap. And what would happen is that the monkey would place his hand in there to get the, get the, get the snack or whatever, and, and then the monkey uh, would would take it and the monkey would have a fist closed with, with, the, with the treat in it. And what would happen is, is that if the monkey were to open his hand, he can pull his hand right out. But what happened is that the monkey would hold on so tight, it would hold on so tight that it would end up getting caught because it, it, the monkey can't take his hand out. The reality is, is that it's so difficult for many of us to trust God because we're still holding on to stuff. 
And all God is asking and all he is requiring and asking of us is that is there anything, is there, is there any bitterness that you're holding? Is there anything that we're holding that's, that God is saying like, man, just let it go and then you will be able, you'll be free to totally trust in him. I want you to dig deep. I want you to dig deep. I want you to dig. I want you, I want you to look inside your life. I want you to see, are, are there things that maybe, that maybe you might be holding on to? Maybe the reason why you can't trust God is because you, you don't trust men. Maybe it's an extremely difficult thing to you, for you to do, and maybe that's something, well, I know that it's something that God wants you to, to totally release. Do you have a root of bitterness? Are you angry with someone? Are you hurting? And if you are, I'm, I, I beg of you to allow God the space by releasing it and saying, I, today I'm going to make a conscious decision. I'm going to choose to let it go. And to let it go is not being lame. To let it go is not being weak. To let it go says, man, I'm going I'm to escalate this and give this to God and let him deal with it. And I think we'll be able to move into this area of trusting God like nobody's business. So I want you to think on this. I want you to think on this. Is there something that you need to let go so that God can work in your life? Yeah, you know Jesus, you're going to heaven, but man, there, there is no activity in your life I want you to take a deep breath. And if you can say, if you can say, Troy, I think that there is something that I need to let go. I want you to stand up. Take a deep breath. And say, if there is something that I need to let go so that I can allow God into the space of my heart, I'm hurting today. This is all good, but today I'm hurting. But I need to let this thing go. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to stand up right where you are. That's what's up. I'm going to go off to the deep end here. There's a couple leaders in here today that you may need to go to the back with your students. Because you're dealing with the hurt, and it's not allowing you to do what God is calling you to do. And if that's you, I'm asking you to stand up now. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. But what I'm going to ask you to do is that after we finish praying, there's some tables back there. I want you to go and I want you to take some serious time and I want you, I want you to spend the time to write down and, 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 and put a prayer request. There's some people that's praying about your situations in, in this building. Some stuff is so deep and so com compact down, deep down inside that you need to process some of this stuff. So afterwards, you know that you'll be going back with your group leaders. Be willing and be open to talk about it because if you don't talk about it, it's going to hurt, it's going to be painful and there won't be space for God to move. Them ask the leaders to follow your students back there because there's a whole bunch of people standing up. This is the opportunity to respond. Let's pray. Daddy, we just thank you. So many of us, including myself, we walk in, we put the church face on and act like everything is good. Sometimes it's not good. Sometimes there's so much stuff that we don't even want to talk about. We don't, want, we don't talk to our best friends about it. That's eating us up on the inside. 
but as a result, it's stopping us from being able to totally depend, totally trust in you, to totally yield our whole lives to you. Today, Daddy, we offer it over to you. And we know that you can do more than we can ask or even think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go back to those tables, and I want you to fill out a, a, prayer, a prayer card or prayer saying, I, I need to get this thing uprooted. And then I want you to go back to your groups and be willing and be open. Let somebody be the first person to get real today and say, this is, this is the thing that's bothering me that's getting in the way. I say, go. Go.